right, so it's the morning of day two. Technically, they say day three, because we got in the night of day one. And when I say it's the morning, I truly mean it's the morning. It is 2 a.m. Egypt time. So it is 2 a.m. Egypt time, and we are getting up at this ungodly hour uh, by a wake-up call that was set by the tour guide. Um, because we have to make it to the airport because we've got to fly for 500 miles to get to where we get on the cruise. Thing is, the airport is so incredibly corrupt. Uh, I think it's amazing. Last night uh, they were playing the theme to the, um, uh, the Godfather down in the lobby of this hotel. Very fitting. <laughs> The airport's so incredibly corrupt, it's impossible to travel with a group of 45 people after like a 7 a.m. flight. So we are flying at 6 o'clock in the morning. This is not anything that's in any brochure that you're going to see or anything like that. So be aware, if you're doing this tour, you're flying at 6 o'clock in the morning. It is now uh, 2, 2.01 in the morning, and it's not 2.01 in the afternoon because it's still dark outside. The loud music literally just stopped out on the Nile River a couple seconds ago, uh, like as of 2 o'clock in the morning. So now everybody's finally saying, it's time to go to sleep, and it's time for us to go to the airport and fly to where we're going to get on a river boat. Not river, well, I mean, it's a river. It's a boat. I don't know if it's got a flat bottom or not. I'll have to ask. Uh, I'm going to get on a river boat for four days, going on for Niles and Niles and Niles and Niles up the Nile River. So uh, I'll give you some updates from the airport, but for now it's time to pack just so you can see the tech it takes to do all these videos. Now it's time to pack all this tech in the next 20 minutes or so so I can get out, get on an airplane, and be on my way at a six o'clock flight, uh, leaving Cairo, Egypt, and heading to Luxor. And that is Luxor, the city in Egypt, not Luxor, the hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. I know those names may be uh, a little bit confusing, so wish me luck. The good news is, for those who like it, there's actually a magic uh, coffee cart that has shown up uh, at 2.45 in the morning. Uh, that is an amazing thing. Uh, I don't drink coffee myself, but you can see there is a magic coffee cart and there is bags of breakfast. Let's, uh, let's take our breakfast bag. And, oh, not that breakfast bag. Let's take that breakfast bag and let's see what's inside of it. Just for giggles. From the Sophie Tell. <laughs> All right, beautiful lobby. We've got a nondescript bag of stuff. Ooh, got some croissants and stuff like that. 
got a certified FDA FCC. Oh, <laughs> it's just wooden cutlery. Some bread. An apple. Some juice. And some jam. I guess this is all we got till we get to the cruise ship, so uh eat up and be hearty as you hole. It's a good apple. See you at the airport. So it is 4.42 a.m. and I just made it through, well, we just made it through basically prison-style security at the Cairo airport. They split up men and women, and put, do a little prostate massage. They're, they're not using the outside of their hands, they're using the inside of their hands and groping. It's a, it's, it's a lot of bit ridiculous. I will tell you, most people on this tour were highly, highly, highly turned off by that. Uh, we're late enough in the video, I can say this. This airport is an absolute clusterfuck. Um, yeah, this is going to be very hard to recommend this tour to people if they do have to come to this airport, which even if they don't go to the cruise, they do have to go through this airport to get home. Uh, I am very glad that we had multiple people that spoke the local language with us that were helping us through because it is an absolute cluster. Uh, the other good news we got is that uh, our boat and our cabin should be ready by the time we get there at 8 a.m. So uh, that's a good thing. So fingers crossed that uh, we can take a little nap before lunch and then going out and seeing the Luxor temples. But uh, yeah, Cairo Airport, that's rough. That's going to be a no for me, dog. But I do have to fly out internationally. Uh, I used to think Heathrow was a bad airport. Uh, Miami was a bad airport. But uh, two levels of security and almost a prostate exam later. Yeah, I, I, this, this makes this tour very, very, very hard to recommend. Well, the good news is uh, it is uh, 4.48 a.m. And I found myself in an airport bar after that... Uh, experience of uh, going through prison twice. Uh, I guess it's time to double fist. Uh, this is Stella, the original Stella. Uh, let's try some Stella. Good beer. I've had this a couple times already. Nice beer. Local Egyptian beer. And then we've got all I know. This is a 21 plus watermelon vodka mix. Okay, yeah, again, uh, 4.48 a.m. in the Cairo airport in the domestic terminal. And we're doing an alcohol review because that, yeah, because, because we can. Oopa. Nice and carbonated. 21 plus watermelon vodka mix, 10% alcohol, and then this is... Uh, much lower percent alcohol. I think this is like 5% or so. But, uh, oh my God. That is delicious. It's like a watermelon jaw. Oh. Oh. oh, that's really good. It's like a, it is, it is a watermelon Jolly Rancher. But alcoholic, it's like one of those Jolly Rancher shots that you might have. It's like a Jolly Rancher cello shot, but oh. Wow. I might have to get me another one of these before getting on the plane. But yes. Head to Luxor in the Cairo airport. <laughs> it is 4.50 a.m. local time. Our flight is at 6 a.m. We'll get into Luxor at 7 a.m. And they say... We're going to get to the boat and our rooms will be ready at 8 a.m. So we can take a nap. Uh, but we we'll, yeah, probably won't take a nap. We'll, we'll do a ship tour because that's what we always do here on No Pants Profits. But um, yeah, if you're ever in Cairo or you're ever anywhere in Egypt, I don't even know a brand on this. It's just called, it's a carbonated alcoholic beverage flavored watermelon. Um, this is delicious. Uh, it doesn't have a brand or anything, but uh, this makes uh, the little experience I just had in the airport a lot better, so. This is good. 
This is better. After yet another security gate, uh, it is now uh, 5 15 a.m. That is three security gates on the way to the plane. Um, it's five o'clock somewhere. They're wrong, five o'clock a.m. instead of p.m., but uh, I got another drink because this is called the uh, double edge. 10% alcohol by volume, made in Egypt. Carbonated gin, gin style mix. Well, I'm not Paolo Roberto. We still got a little bit of the Stella left, but that watermelon was delicious. So let's see if we like the lemon mint gin as we're waiting at the gate. Again, all the alcohol sealed for some reason here. It is uh, 5 16 a.m. local time. Ooh. Oh, that's actually pretty good. Ooh, I don't like gin. Lemon and mint and gin. You know, double edge. They really do seem to work. This is three drinks in a span of like 25 or 30 minutes, but it should make this flight more bearable and hopefully uh, we get to the ship pretty soon. Bottoms up. By the way, I hate this airport. I hate this airport. So it's 7.40 a.m. and we've now made it to the actual desert. Uh, this Luxor feels uh, very much like the Luxor in Las Vegas. And you can see we are baking on the tarmac right here. Thank you so much. With the Egypt Air flight that we just got off. It's about time to uh, head to our cruise ship. Hopefully that will be uh, not nearly as hot. I will tell you, we've probably got about, I, I know time and the sun and stuff like that is a factor, but it probably got about 30 degrees Fahrenheit warmer here. Just in the amount of time we were on the flight for an hour. It is boiling outside. I'm not looking forward to what's going on uh, later today, midday after lunch, with us exploring the actual temples. So, wish me luck. We are here at the Luxor Airport, and I want to give you a perfect example of something that just does not make any cultural sense whatsoever. Uh, and the guide just doesn't seem to get this. And this is something that having an American guide on the tour would actually fix. She's making us go and lift the handle up on our suitcases, and all of our suitcases have Globus tags on them. This is the dumbest thing I have ever seen done with suitcases, because there's no logical sense. She's trying to say, hey look, if there's an extra one, I wouldn't know if you don't lift up the handle. But this is, this is, they all have tags on them already. So we're literally wasting time doing this. We did it here, we did it at the hotel. This is one of the most asinine and stupid things I've ever seen done because everybody has a tag on it and they're making you go and lift up your handle and it literally makes no sense. And when I fight it, I'm yelled at for fighting it. Like I don't have any idea what's going on. This is stupid. Uh, and I want Globus to know this. Whoever, whoever's coming up with this idea. I don't think it's coming from Globus. I've never done this on any other Globus trips before. You have a very clear yellow tag right there. And every single time your bag moves, you have to lift up your thing to show that it's actually yours. This makes absolutely zero sense and it's wasting every time we move bags. This is wasting the 20 to 30 minutes every time we move bags to identify your bag. This is not a Globus policy. This is something that some cuckoo came up with over here that serves no way, shape, or form because guess what? The bags are already marked. So it's a great way to waste time. I don't know if it's something mafia going on. I'm not sure exactly what's going on here, but Globus really needs to look into this because it is it's wasting time of our vacation to do this stupid identification thing every time you see your bags. Six hours and 15 minutes later, we finally made it to our cruise boat. You see, we're literally right across from some ruins. And there, I assume, is the MS Mayfair. And you can see someone's literally being carried down the stairs right now. It's pretty funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> but we are headed to the actual cruise for four days on the MS Mayfair. Again, three, God, six hours and 15 minute trek to get over here. Fortunately, it was not planned to, but we are gonna have some time for a little bit of a rest before lunch and then going out and exploring in this heat. It is uh, nearly, nearly 100 degrees Fahrenheit right now. But let's take a look at our first look at the boat here. Oh, wow. Looks pretty new. Now there are 350 river boats on the, uh, on the Nile River. And you can see it's really like right up against. Now I have done, if you've looked at this channel before, I've done the American Queen steamboats before. This is not a steamboat, does not have a paddle wheel, but uh, it's its own whole thing. And we're definitely gonna go and explore this in a very short period of time from now because it looks awesome. The MS Mayfair, our home away from home for the next four days here. Of note, these uh, last steps are a bit of a challenge to get down if you do have a wheelchair or anything else like that. They are their own special challenge. I know, I'm saying not for me, not for me, for other people. I'm letting other people know. <laughs> so this is a pretty new boat, right? A couple years old? Five years old. Wow, it looks like brand new. I see, I see, I see. And we've got our gangway. And we are going right on up the MS Mayfair. They got a hoist, they got, uh, kind of impressive. It's a what, modern ship? Oh. Yep. Thank you. Oh. Oh my God. What a relief. This is great air conditioning and all of that. You really can't ask for much more than this. And what's really cool is the other riverboat is actually docked attached to this boat, which is kind of cool, which is how a lot of the uh, European riverboats are too. They're docked, I think we're at least three deep right now uh, on the MS Mayfair. We got a cabin tour and a full ship tour coming up as soon as we get checked in right here. All right, so we just got to the riverboat uh, room. We are in room 202, which is right on the embarkation deck. When we came on board, just literally right down that hallway a little bit. Let's take a look. I haven't even seen the whole room yet. So join along with me on the MS Mayfair, room 202. Got some life jackets, because yes, this is a boat. And uh, if you think boats can't sink, uh, I hate to use the same joke again, but uh, you're in denial. So we got life jackets, we got a safe, we got a nice big room here with Egyptian themed uh, everythings. Nice desk, fantastic air conditioner. If you could hear how this air conditioner was blowing, hold on. Yes, it's so cold in here. After this afternoon and being out in the heat that I know we're going to face this afternoon, air conditioning is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. We'll take a look out the side, which uh, if it's a riverboat and you know a riverboat, there's just another boat out the side. But let's take a look at the bathroom real quick. So turn around. Now the bathroom does have a gigantic step up. And in terms of prettiness, this is not a suite or anything like that. This is the prettiest cruise ship bathroom in a standard, holy crap. My God. It's like cedar planked, 
and everything. Not quite sure what that is. Whether that's a window to the ends there or not. You've got a rainfall shower head. Oh wow. This is actually really exceptionally nice. I'm just still not sure what that thing is actually for. It's from Egyptian engineering and it's tempered. And the whole the whole room is mirrored. And it feels like you're in a sauna. If you take a look at the floor, it's actually wood planked. Can't say I've ever seen a cruise ship bathroom like this before. It's like industrial and modern and everything at the same time. I'm really fascinated. And yes, there's actually a tub in there if you wanted to take a bath in the tub. I do want to figure out what that is right there. But let's go. Let's go out. Oh, wow. That is a look into the bathroom. That's actually a sliding work of art <laughs> that you can control uh, whether or not uh, one can see into the bathroom. Oh, and while we're at it, how low can we go? How low can we go? Cool fan. Can we go even higher? tried. I'm not sure if one is the highest or three is the highest, but yeah, so that's like a peekaboo bathroom. Very uh, Virgin Voyages-esque, but let's take a look. The last thing we haven't looked at, yeah, look, we've got a nice little fruit set up right there. The last thing we haven't looked at here, it's probably going to be a view of another ship. Oh! Oh, that's ugly. But I have the forwardmost, uh, is that an animal? No, that's just trash. I was like, is that an animal? You can see there. Uh, I have the forward most uh, facing room on deck two, which lets me see into the uh, mooring area of the riverboat dock next to us. But uh, overall, really super impressed uh, with this room. Uh, let's go ahead and let's, uh, let, let's take a look, walk around the rest of the boat. So we've done the cabin tour. Now let's do the actual ship tour. So we're walking in the cabin corridor, a very small cabin corridor, I'll turn it around, and we are going to exactly where we came on board. So a few minutes ago, you saw we came on board. It was a bit of a cluster because everyone was checking in, and now, tranquility. Nice and quietness. You see they've got the, oh, and it's getting much cooler in here now that they've closed the door. Uh, they do have the security arch and everything like that, but I mean, I don't think there's a big issue here again. That air condition is absolutely wonderful beautiful space on here and there's in each of these little pockets there's like 10 cabins so you see 211 to 223 that's like 12 cabins total the other one we were on but the decorations and everything here is just it's very much egypt now the guide said the guide said that the ship was about five years old now i will tell you the room keys are still mag stripe uh, keys and rfid's been around for a little while uh, so i'm judge that age a little bit but you know Egypt doesn't have e-sims or anything anymore so uh, anything so I think it's just passenger decks on deck two I don't have a map or anything like that I'm just kind of uh I'm winging it so we're gonna go up to deck three Got a little lounge area up here on deck three it's got information on the wi-fi We've got that nice little lounge area. If you're going to need Wi-Fi, you should have picked up the SIM card in the airport, which is what I definitely did. For some reason, they don't want you taking pictures of a blank TV. Um, okay. Cool. So we're on, again, deck three. They've got little board games and stuff like that. And a whole library with the, the young students encyclopedia right there. And the uh, looks like a ram horn, like a shofar from the Jewish tradition, seems to be really what's going on here. And there's a lot of really modern touches, like a giant spotlight that I assume is just here for show, but for some reason it's actually legitimately plugged in. 
and you know I'm the kind of guy that likes to cause mischievousness. So um, there's the button on the floor that's connected to the spotlight. I'm gonna push it. So like, spotlight right here. Got the button right there. Oh, it does turn on the spotlight, but it's a very uh, dim spotlight right there. So my assumption is that deck, uh, deck two and deck three are passenger cabin decks. Um, but uh, we've got, oh, so this is called the first upper saloon. Again, don't really have a map, but this is the first upper saloon. And we've got a second upper saloon. Now we have a clothing store, looks like. If I wanted to be an Egyptian drag queen, I guess I could buy Egyptian drag queen clothes here up on the fourth floor. And do they have fezes? Everybody said, hey Rich, you gotta go fez. You gotta get a fez. Well, that's for my dad. He loves hats. So I can tell you he's getting an Egypt hat from here. But they've got a whole Boutique. Go out to the sun deck in a minute. Bunch of clothes. Bunch of little figures. Stuff like that. Even King Tut. And then we've got a lounge. Which is really quite a, a pretty lounge here. check the uh, prices if they're in. Okay, so they are in their money. So, let's just see what I would know. Soft drink. Uh, very reasonable. 40 of their money, which is like 35, so it's like a dollar or so. So it's not really, uh, not really gigantic cruise ship prices. Which I like. Or it might be big cruise ship prices for this area and you've also got some outside seating here too again very very modern extremely modern kind of looks like a youtuber set <laughs> one of those finance youtubers i i know i know i say this and you look at me and you go aren't you one of those finance youtubers but uh yeah it kind of looks like a one of those sets, one of those finance YouTubers. Uh, more cabins up here. Looks like we have male and female bathrooms. Yes, in Egypt, there are only two choices. There are men, oh, there are women, there are men, and there are women. But let's go ahead and let's go up to the sun deck. There's a swimming pool. Oh. It's hot out here. It's very hot out here. I don't know why I was excited that they were gonna have a hot tub on this ship, but it is extremely hot out here. But it's also extremely pretty out here. Look at this. Oh my. Kind of blown away with what they've done up here. I've been on river cruises before, but I've just done an absolutely terrible job. And, you know, this top deck is just an empty deck for the funnels and stuff like that. They literally look like they have a bar up here. Uh, this is actually our, you want to compare, oh, okay. This one has a bigger pool. This is the boat next to us. This is the HS, I can't tell, because I don't see any names anywhere. That's our, that's not the Mayfair. But here is the MS Mayfair. And that was the roof down to the bar. And then this is the pool. We got a whole little covered sunbed section. This is the pool right here. This looks like a real, legitimate, actual pool. 
which I was not expecting, but also kind of blown away by. And I think, look, you're looking at a guy, it's 100 degrees out here. Do I really want a hot tub? No, but do I really want a hot tub? Yes, I think there's a hot tub out here. So we're just walking back. This is a great, 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 great outdoor deck. Good God. They even got a coffee machine out here. Got some, yeah, got some running water. Again, you're in Egypt. Don't drink the water unless it's bottled. But look at this area. And yes, yes they do. My God, they have not one, but two hot tubs. Now, that'll probably fit one of me in it because they're not gigantic. But uh, you see that one, but two hot tubs. Now this boat next door has a bigger pool, has a bar right on the top. But uh, unfortunately, it's missing something that the Mayfair has. Mayfair has hot tubs. That boat there, we don't know the name of, doesn't have hot tubs. And I say that as plural because yes, there are two hot tubs out here. Uh, I'll just walk around a little bit more of this deck. I do want to figure out uh, where we can get some grub, where the food is, because the food is at 11.30. It is right now, uh, hmm, check, check the correct watch, it's 10.08. So we've got an hour and a half, an hour and 20 minutes again, uh, until food. But my, this is actually really, really well built in the floor. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like uh, kind of looks like the bathroom <laughs> if you remember the bathroom we were in a minute ago um, it's got similar to this floor I think they had some extra floor and just decided to do the bathroom got a good deal on it but I love it because there's plenty of these little beds and stuff we do have one day that's just cruising so I'd be interested to see how packed this gets if it gets real busy or not also up here is uh, where you can smoke so that's where you can smoke up here and you do here i mean look that's literally an ancient site like a couple feet away you've got an ancient site you've got horse-drawn carriages you've got motorcycles this is literally kind of straight straight out of a movie uh amazingly straight out of a movie let's just see if we can find anything more here uh i i was not given a map i haven't seen a map so i can't really tell you where things happen to be. I'm just kind of wandering. Bel Air Lounge. And we've got a welcome aboard the MS Mayfair. Uh, we're going down this main staircase. Again, it's not very big. I think it's hmm, what we do. We did uh, five floors, five stories we did. But let's go down the stairs a little bit and look around. Ooh. So we'll go down the stairs a little bit more just to make sure that we see everything here. We will go back and revisit this in a full ship tour once I get the uh, layout of exactly what's going on here. I know it's not open yet, but where's the dining room? Yeah, it's downstairs. Da okay. So the dining room is downstairs. Just so we can take a look. So we just went from deck two, where I just asked that was reception. That was back where my room was. And we're going to go to deck number one. We've got a spa. And we've got the Nile. So this is the spa. I don't know. These are, that's a health clinic. I really don't think I should be back there. I think this might be, no. Is this passenger area? Yeah, it's passenger area. So this is some cabins on deck one. Oh, I thought I was at the bottom of the boat. These are actually at the bottom of the boat. I don't think I'm supposed to go where I'm going right now, but we'll take a peek. 
Ooh. We're not going to enter this room because I don't need trouble with Egyptian authorities. Uh, but uh, that's where the pump house is and everything like that, which is kind of cool. And then the last place we haven't seen is actually the restaurant. And I know it's not open yet, but uh, they do have a combination. Depends on the meal, depends on the day. They have a combination of a buffet and of a seated a la carte menu. Uh, I don't know what the food tastes like, because guess what? I haven't had it yet. But let's just we'll take a peek real quick. There is the restaurant. Not going to go in it, but uh, we will be going in it in about an hour or so. Actually, you no, know, just going to take a peek. There you go. You look at the restaurant. It looks like you could seat about 100 people, maybe 120, 150 people. Total, and they do have a COVID screening here, it looks like. And oh, there's the spa. Remember, when you go to a spa, uh, the side of the boat actually tells you where the outside spa rooms are because one side says tug and one side says no tug. That's how you know where the spa is. But that was a, that was a happy ending joke. Um, so, yeah. Oh, wow. And you've even got. A wet sauna and a dry sauna in here. And it is not on, but really quite cool. It's hard for you to see in there, and I apologize, but that is the side of the other riverboat. You can actually, like, oh, you can turn it on, but we're not going to turn it on right now. And then you've got a, that looks like a wet sauna right there but we're on deck one now it's time to uh go back to deck two go to the cabin take a rest for a little bit uh, because we've literally been going since two o'clock in the morning and you've been along with me on the ride it is now 10 13 so it is more than eight hours later in this journey uh after sleeping for three hours last night so uh, it is uh, time to collapse. So I'm gonna head back up to deck two and I'm gonna take you along for our afternoon adventures and see what's happening, right? Outside of the riverboat, our form of transportation on the Nile River, sorry, I don't know if I said that yet. <laughs> on the Nile River for the Niles and Niles and Niles that are ahead of us. Back to room two. O oh, to our little R and R before lunch. So lunch on the river cruise was actually absolutely fantastic. Uh, the best meal we've had the whole time we've been here, and we are right now in the Karnak Temple, which it is very, 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 very hot. Uh, and you can see exactly what's going on here. It's about 100 degrees, but look at these columns. Look at everything like that. This is all original. If you're looking at this and you're saying, I've seen things like this before, well, that's because they're uh, copied from here. <laughs> everything you've seen that's like this before has, uh, has kind of been copied from here. But there's over a hundred columns here. This is the biggest temple, uh, which is where the pharaohs would pay their respects to God. This is the largest temple in all of Egypt with the most columns and everything like that. It's really quite an experience to, uh, to see this in person. You kind of see all these hieroglyphics for real. Uh, and I mean, to see them for real, for real is uh, really quite cool. But the Karnak Temple, uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, we're actually getting towards the exit of the temple now. Um, learned all the history of it and everything like that. And I mean, you'll even see the, the exposure, like this is just kind of out here. Like I'm not going to touch it, because I'm. but you could touch it. There's no glass, there's, there's nothing like that. Just the details and everything like that. These big columns, these big gods. It's, it's like, gives you an appreciation for, you know, where all this actually came from. You know, I've seen a lot of these in the Luxor in Vegas before, but seeing it this close and seeing it real and seeing it thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years old. It's absolutely amazing. Um, it's very hot. 
not gonna lie, it's extremely hot out here. I've already gone through four bottles of water just since we've been here, uh, but we're finding shade when we can. Uh, we're going inside next, and we are going to go learn about something, uh, if you are a Disney fan, uh, papyrus, paper. We're going to a papyrus factory to learn how they made the first paper. Because before people wrote stuff down on paper, they wrote stuff down on papyrus. But even look at this, uh, look at the lambs. The rams, not the lambs, the rams. You see all those rams just lined up. And this temple and the scale of this is just absolutely phenomenal. Just absolutely incredible and then we've got our security guy because that's important he's here making sure we're secure there's mr security he's kind of hanging around the back and trust me when you're out and about be happy you have the uh, security guy i'll tell you on the boat it's fantastic because you know you've got the security of the boat uh you're good in a hotel it's fantastic the biggest thing is when you're in a public place or when you're transiting between two places is where you want to make sure you got the security guy so for me i'm not gonna lie yeah i have the tour guide in my ear but i'd rather hang back with the the train security guy uh than the tour guide that's just my two cents but uh this is the Karnak Temple, and I've got a, another really cool shot coming up, so I want to show you this kind of live, which was, this was the entrance of where the Nile got rerouted to. Uh, so we're walking up to this, and you'll see, yes, the image is all blown out because it's really that bright there. But you'll see all these rams just lined up, and the only place you'll see rams lined up like this is uh, pretty much uh, here or at a Dodge dealer. Yeah. I made a Dodge Ram joke. Sorry. So we've made it to Luxor, and I will talk about that in a minute. But before we made it to Luxor, we went to a papyrus factory. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I know papyrus from the Epcot ride at Disney, where they have them banging out reeds. And it was really, really cool to kind of see how papyrus was made. It was really cool they uh, showed you exactly how it was made. And then you had an opportunity to get some papyrus if you wanted to get some papyrus. So. Uh, Take a look at the papyrus factory here. Well, uh, very warm welcome to our museum again. My name is Ash. Uh, you're gonna be, I'll be your local guide for a few minutes to give you a demonstration about papyrus plot. This one. First time for all of you to see papyrus plot? Yes. Yeah? So, I will give you uh, an information about the plot, then I will give it to you to, so you can throw it to each other because the first touch of papyrus plot always causing health like a love. So, yes. So this is the papyrus plant, which is a tropical plant. It's mean it's in hot weather, too much water to grow up. Sometimes the length of the papyrus plant reach to five or six meters high, as much as it's getting hot. And it's cultivated by the sides of the river Nile because it's need water daily for irrigations. In ancient times, this plant was a holy one, and this way for two reasons. The first one, watch this thing. It's in the shape of. Triangle. Triangle or <coughs> pyramid, yes. <laughs> and a pyramid in ancient times was a symbol of eternity. The flower or the branch, when we do it upside down, it's look like the rays of the sun. Sun rays, that symbolized of Amun Ra, the sun god, the local god, which everyone believed by his religion at this time. Uh, how is ancient Egyptians, they turned out this plant to sheets of paper, that's the one I'm going to show you. Firstly, they cut the stem into the size they want it. If they want to make a paper this size, so they cut it to this size, bigger, medium, whatever the size, and you can throw it, but still both is okay. Uh, so watch the stems here. It consists of two parts, green outer part and inner white part. So we have to remove the green one the same way I'm doing. Fast cutting, yeah? Yes. Because I used to work with Rachel. You know Rachel? Mm -hmm. Rachel Ray. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, the green archer part, as you see, it's been, it's very solid and very sharp. Has been used in ancient times to make slippers, fruit baskets, <coughs> chairs, 
and even they used it for fishing hook because they found the crocodiles, they hated the smell of this one. That's about the green one. The inner one, this is the one we need to make sheets of paper. We still need to get them into slices, just like this. So as you see, it's a breakable, very easy. Why? Because it consists of 20% cellulose or sugar, 80% water. So we have to make water less than 80% to make the slices getting flexible and strong. How we can do that by using mallet. a mallet. And press them softly like this. And then we have to roll it to get right water and make it more flexible. The same way I'm doing. As much as I'm rolling them, water is coming out, as you see. And now, watch the differences between now and before, how they're getting wow. more stronger. And even they are very flexible. Then we threw them back in water. So how come we reduce the amount of water from 80% to 40 or 30%, then we put them back in water. The slices were not absorbing any more water, but to get the color we wanted. If we want to get sheet of paper this color, white color, we have to keep them six days in water. And if we want to get brown sheet like this one, because this is natural, we need them 12 days in water. That's the difference between the white color and the brown color. After six days, we get two pieces of carpet like this, normal one. The size of carpet depends about the size of paper you want to make. In ancient times, they used the same one, but was made out of animal skins or linen. And we arrange the slices in horizontal and vertical. Or vertical and horizontal, it doesn't matter, but just one layer. So am I adding any glue here? No. So how they will get sticky? The cellulose is perfect. The cellulose, the sugar, the 20% sugar or cellulose will be... Just crocodiles. <laughs> actually, it's not poison, but actually, it's not tasty. So, <laughs> so as you are seeing, we have to finish them all, but that's to show you how it's going to be, and then we cover it by the other piece and keep them under a hand. <coughs> In ancient times, they used the same one, but was made out of what? Wood? No, wood not, was not popular wood at this time. Granite. Sorry? Granite. granite stone. Excellent. Granite stone was two pieces of granite stone and keep them in the top. So the same time in water will be the same time under the press. How many oh. days we need it for the white color? Six. So we need six days under the press. For the brown? Twelve. So we need twelve days. So now you have the choice. You want to stay six days or twelve? <laughs> <laughs> so in six days, we're going to get sheet of paper similar like this. Focus with me in this part of my demo because this will help you how you can know the differences between real papyrus paper and fake one. There is some fake papers where you can see out of the temples with guys who are saying papyrus or at the small shops, which I guarantee they are made out of banana trees, the leaves of the banana, because they look like papyrus. But now you will know the differences between them. First of all, the original papyrus paper here, it's in horizontal and vertical. Mm -hmm. The paper itself, very flexible. Not crack, even they are strong. And they are washable and recyclable. Oh, wow. That's real papyrus paper. Mm -hmm. The fake one, maybe you not while you're walking out of the streets that people are selling paper, mm -hmm. which they say papyrus, but it's mm -hmm. unreal. Mm -hmm. They keep them flat like this, they mm -hmm. cannot roll, and keep them in plastic bags mm -hmm. all the time. Why? Because they are stamped, not handmade, and because of the chemical colors and glue they are using, so that's why they keep them in plastic bags to not cause any skins inflammations for them. Plus, to not make the colors come off and show you that this is not real work. All the scenes you are seeing here, they all handmade paintings, the colors and the paper last forever. It's never ever changed. <laughs> 
Even the paper, as I told you, it's washable and recyclable. So let me get half of this one. If you're going to wash it, does it, does it how long not, do you have to Not it? wash it with, with its color, because the colors, of course, right, right. be about the paper. But how long does it take to dry out? Just, just that, at one hour or two hours. So you don't have to flatten no, it? No, no, no. I will show you how is it. That's about the paper, OK? So now let me give you an idea about one of the most important scenes that ancient Egyptians left behind. Where is the papyrus plant? Mesh. Where is the, oh, it's right here. the plant? The plant. Yes, please. I need to just thank you. So watch here. This is the tree of life, which is consists of five pairs. The five pairs representing the five stages of life: pair, childhood, young, or teenage, the middle age, and they even used it for marriage. That's why they have the wings here. So the wings, it means they are happy. They got married or ready to run away, so I'm not sure. <laughs> and the last one, look at the faces of the birds. Four of them, the first four birds, their face is directed to the east bank. And the last one to the west. Sun rises and sunset, life and afterlife or the forever life. All right, so back to Luxor. So right now I am in the Luxor temple. Now, the Luxor looks very different from the Luxor pyramid in Vegas because Luxor is not a pyramid, it's a temple. But a lot of these drawings, a lot of these figures, a lot of everything like that looks so similar to what you've seen before. I want to show you some of this and I want to show you some of this live because it's really quite cool. These are thousands of years old and I'm going to do bad, I'm going to touch. Thousands of years old, you can see all of these drawings and everything like that. You can even see color in them too. If you look up, you'll see all the color. This is just so well preserved. It's so old. I mean, it's, it's uh, I gotta say, you know, probably, probably the oldest thing I've ever seen. It's just so old. It's so, oh, look, there's a, there's a kitty cat. I don't like cats, but there's a kitty cat. And there's also a lot of pigeons here, which they say, is a delicacy you've got to try when you're in Egypt. So I might try and find me some stuffed pigeon. But yeah, the, uh, the Luxor temple is really quite awesome. And you'll see how it opens up right here. I mean, it just opens up. There's all these columns and everything like that. But realistically, right now, it is 5 p.m. So we have been going on practically no sleep for uh, what is that? 12, 15 hours. This day is absolutely ridiculous. It's 100 degrees outside right now. Fortunately, the only thing you've got later today is actually an optional excursion to go back to a place we were earlier, but to see a light show at the place we were a bit earlier in the day. Uh, the tour guide blatantly recommended just don't go to the light show. It's not worth it. It hasn't been updated since like the 60s or the 70s, and it's pretty old tech. The one at the pyramids is supposedly a lot better, but we literally missed that one by a week. We missed the pyramids light show by a week. It ended last week. But you can take a look again at this Luxor temple. There's a lot of stuff here that looks super similar to the Luxor hotel, and it is hot, 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 hot out here. But just taking a look, it's just, it's, it's mind blowing what's actually here. I mean, you can see all these columns and we'll even go ahead and we're going to walk to the obelisk. The good thing is since this is an escape by Globus, it is in the slower part of the year. I cannot imagine this. I, I literally cannot imagine this 20 degrees, uh, 20 degrees hotter, 120 degrees. Um, and with a uh, five times the number of people here because that's what it's going to be in like a month. So that's why you do these escapes. This is the last escape by Globus of the year because uh, that's their off season stuff. That's a bit lower priced. But I mean, you look here, you'll see this. I want to show you one more thing on video, which is actually a giant obelisk, which is coming up right here. So say everybody's taking their pictures but there is a really cool really awesome giant obelisk if I remember correctly now it could be just pure heat stroke and not remembering anything today because we've been up since two o'clock in the morning 
but I mean, if you take a look at everything here, it is uh, really quite, quite amazing. And uh, yep, yep. Uh, heat stroke made up that obelisk. So uh, fortunately, there's, there's, there's no obelisk here. Fortunately, it's time to get back to the boat. Um, and I'll tell you, I've heard varying opinions from everyone. I'm actually perfectly fine with the boat. I love the boat. Uh, lunch on the boat was fantastic. I'm actually looking forward to dinner. One of the weird things is they did take your dinner order during lunch. And a lot of people just couldn't rationalize that they were going to take your dinner order during lunch. But, you know, it's a thing. Um, I like the ship. I think it's quirky. I think it's very Egypt. I don't know if people were expecting like a Royal Caribbean cruise and they're all like angry that's not a Royal Caribbean cruise, but you know, I really like it. It's got a nice amount of personality to it. It does not, this is something important, it does not have any elevators whatsoever. So we had someone you might have seen in the video earlier that had to be carried down the stairs to the ship. If the person wants to go from their cabin to the bar, to the top deck, something like that, they either have to take the stairs or they'll be carried up and down because in Egypt, there's no ADA. There's none of these uh, acts that require people to uh, to have accessible. But um, while we're at it, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the front of, this is the Luxor and the Luxor Temple. And you can kind of see the sun's going down, so it's not nearly as hot, but the lighting's, the lighting's a little more off. And you can see all of these uh, statues of Ramses, the sum number, not sure the number. Oh, and there's the obelisk I talked about. See, I'm not crazy. It's not heat stroke. Um, there actually was an obelisk. So I'm gonna go get me some water and a lot of air conditioning. And I think there's actually a, uh, a dance or a welcome party or something after dinner tonight. It's right now five o'clock. We've got dinner at 7.30, so some time to cool off before dinner. And um, if you saw earlier in the video, we are actually parked right across from this site. So it's literally a, uh, about a two, three minute drive. We could have walked here if it wasn't the uh, other side of the temple. Uh, but this is the Luxor Temple, not in Las Vegas, but the Luxor Temple here in Luxor, Egypt, on the escapes by Globus, Egypt with Nile Cruz. You know, on the way out of the Luxor, this is actually really cool. Uh, the two sites we were at today actually connect with an avenue of sphinxes. So if you know the Sphinx, the thing that uh, Napoleon may or may not have cut the nose off of, uh, you've actually got an avenue of sphinxes that connects, and you can kind of see where we were this morning, is the Karnak Temple over there. And there's a whole set of sphinxes that connects the Karnak Temple over to the Luxor Temple. And there's just thousands of, well, hundreds if not thousands of sphinxes. And it's really, yeah, quite cool. You can see all the way down to the other temple right here. But let's see if we can find a sphinx that's in relatively good shape here. Um, these are actually looking in relatively good shape here. Unlike the uh, actual Sphinx, which doesn't have a nose. Let's find one that does, just to finish our day outside today, here at the Avenue of Sphinxes. Hey, look, it, it actually has a nose. The time is now 10, 11 p.m. and I'm finally back in the room. This has been a long, long day, over 20 hours. I just got back from something though that I do want to share with you. Um, they did have a belly dancing, or as I call it, I'm a larger man myself. This girl was a larger man, uh, not a larger man, a uh, larger person herself. Um, so they kind of a, a stomach dancing uh, show, not belly dancing show, uh, up in the bar upstairs, which is something that's included. Um, so take a look.
also on top of the stomach dancing show, they had a return of the Spectro Magic Electrical Light Parade. And they had one of the twirly skirt men going around and uh, doing some great things. So uh, take a look here too, because it's uh, quite interesting. but not least 20 hours plus into this journey of getting from Cairo, the worst airport ever, over to this ship, which, hey, look, I like cruises. I like cruise ships. I don't have any complaints. Um, Luxor is a bustling town right now, and I want to leave you with just some shots that I just took off the side of the boat um, of Luxor, and you can see the Temple of Luxor, you can see the town coming to life with locals or, you know, at least Egyptians uh, and people still getting on the boat. So that is going to wrap it up for day number two, which they call day number three. But day number one, you just had dinner uh, at the hotel and that was it. So I'm calling this day number two of the Escapes by Globus uh, Egypt with a Nile cruise. It's time to collapse in day number three in the Valley of the Kings coming your way soon.